good morning. So it is Sunday and it's kind of an overcast, gloomy day out, but it's perfect to be out doing some cleanup. And that's pretty much what we're gonna be doing today. Aaron, you can probably hear the lawnmower in the background. He's trying to see how many leaves he can pick up with the mower. I don't know how well it's gonna work. We tried to do it the other day and it just kind of drug him around the yard, so. I don't know, but let me turn the camera around and let me show you what we got going on here. So this is the rose garden. Look at all the leaves. And we have still so many to come down. And then if we move this direction, you can see I've kind of tried to keep the pathways clean, but I really need to rake out the beds a little bit. I had to clean out the coleus, you guys. It was so sad. We had a really cold night and it just took it. Also had to clean out the uh, dark colored potato vine. I can't remember, I think it was Illusion Midnight. Um, that was filling in this area. It looked really pretty for the summer. Um, and then you can see the hostas are starting to change color. So those will all stay because they look pretty. And then here's the grass. <laughs> so not too bad. We've been trying to keep up on it. But we had a really bad windstorm the other night. It actually kept me up. I got up at like 3.34 in the morning and I just stood at the window because we had just cleaned the garden like it was I was feeling like okay everything is like coming together I don't have to worry about so much work out here and then the wind just it blew so hard and it blew almost all the leaves off the ash trees so like the ash tree goes all the way up there and it only has a little bit of leaves down here left um, and it just made a huge huge mess so that's what we're doing today and everything is wet because it rained yesterday pretty much all day long um, and today, it, I don't think it's supposed to rain anymore today, but it's supposed to be really cloudy. Um, but the temperature is perfect for working. Let's go see what Aaron's doing. Well, he's making some pathways. That will make our workload a lot easier today. Looks like it's doing a fairly decent job. I think the wet leaves are actually helping. Uh-huh. It's less fluffy. Yeah, so it's, it's less fluffy, mm -hmm. so they're not like blowing away as much. Yeah, it's picking up the majority. So. It's definitely better than hand raking it all, I think. Okay, so while he's doing that, um, I am going to run upstairs to my plant room and plant up some amaryllis, but I've got to grab some potting soil. I meant to do it the other night, and I had no potting soil left up there, so anyway, like resupply up there. Oh, look at all these leaves. We're gonna have to rake these up because they're in the driveway. But my asparagus did really well this year. It's getting to a point where I'm about ready gonna, to uh, cut it back here pretty quick as soon as all the green has kind of turned yellow. But I'm really, really thrilled with it. You can see like how many spears came up. So they really stooled out and have grown really well. So before we go up to the plant room, I wanted to introduce you to our newest family member. Hi kitty. This is Russell. We adopted him a couple of weeks ago and he is such a sweet, sweet kitty. So most of you guys know that we lost Dexter a couple months ago and it's been so sad and um, we have missed him so much. I mean, he was my buddy out in the garden. He followed me around everywhere that I went. He was just always there. And I missed him a lot. Um, and I didn't think that we were gonna adopt another kitty for a while or another animal. Um, but we heard about this little guy and uh, we couldn't resist. So we adopted him from the Idaho Humane Society um, when he was 11 weeks old. So now he's about 13 weeks old. And the interesting thing about this little guy is he's a polydactyl, which means he has six toes on his front paws. Move your face. <laughs> Move your face, kitty. See if we can get a good shot of him. There, you can see. He's got an extra toe there on his front paws, which is the most adorable thing. He is such a sweet kitty, and he just, he wants to just cuddle all the time. He wants to just lay down and cuddle with you and sleep on you. <laughs> if we let him, he would sleep like right by my face at night. Um, in fact, one night I woke up and he was sleeping across my neck. <laughs> Like totally out, he wasn't making any noise at all. I had to kick him out of the bed last night because he was he likes to take up a ton of space, but he likes to always be touching you. Um, that's something about Dexter that we didn't have. Dexter loved to be pet, but he did not like to be held or sit in your lap or anything like that. 
This little kitty loves the cuddles, which is pretty sweet. So the extra toe is actually a genetic thing. It's not, a lot of people think it's uh, due to inbreeding or something like that, but it's actually a gene that runs in um, kitties. And it appears mostly in northern breeds or breeds that live in colder areas like Maine Coons. Um, they'll get the extra toes because they're good for snow. It's like snowshoes. Um, so they have better handling on snow. So this little kitty, it showed up in him. Um, and when we heard that there was a little orange kitty, which we have an affinity for orange cats now. Um, we heard there was a little orange kitty with six toes on each front paw. We thought we got to go adopt him. So we did. He's already fixed, has had all of his vaccines, and he's been a great kitty. Have you been a great kitty? Loves to play. Huh. Alright, so now I'm gonna head upstairs and plant up my amaryllis. He'll probably follow us up there. You gonna come, kitty? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Alright, guys, so this is what I've got. There are six amaryllis right here. These are all from Burby's Best. So thank you, Burby's Best, for sending these out. These two right here are called Apple Blossom. Absolutely gorgeous pink and white. Then we've got these two here, which are the amaryllis, uh, the large white amaryllis, which I adore white amaryllis. I think they are so pretty. And then these two right here, which actually these bulbs are quite a bit bigger. These are huge bulbs. Look at that. Those are the red lion amaryllis, which are classic. I love to have these in my house at Christmas time as well. Kitty, no, 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 no doing that. Mm -mm. I need to get your spray bottle up here, huh? And then the other three, which are right here, I picked up at the garden center where I work. There's the variety name there, Papilio. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, but they almost look orchid-esque. I think they're so delicate, beautiful looking, and I love the tint of green. So all three of these are going to go in this little beautiful cast iron urn. What are you doing up there? Kitty, kitty. Come here. No. We're working on the staying out of my house plants issue at the moment. I did not have this issue with Dexter, but he just wants to play with everything. So I usually have a spray bottle that I can squirt him with and he runs off. He's getting pretty good, but he's still, yeah, still got a little ways to go. Russell, hey, hey. No, good boy, come on. Come on. Come out of there, good boy. All right, so this is what I've got. They're all planted, and I still need to top dress the soil, but I wanted to show you how high up I actually put the soil. So I only just basically cover the roots of the bulb, and then I come up slightly up the sides just to kind of help anchor them in, because they will get quite tall and quite heavy. So we want to make sure that they'll stay anchored in there, but we just want to make sure that no water or soil gets down into the crown of the bulb. So, you know, where any of these little creases start right in here. We don't want any water or soil down in there because that is the quickest way to rot your amaryllis. So, and then in here, there's the three. I think that'll be a, such a pretty, pretty thing when they're all blooming. So now, like I said, I need to top dress the soil, which I do not have any moss in here. You can use moss or rocks or bark or whatever. I'm gonna use moss this year, so I've gotta go back out to the barn and get more. You guys, I actually do not have enough moss to finish this little amaryllis project. You've gotta be kidding me. I always have a ton of moss. So I'm gonna have to, I guess, forget doing that today and I'm gonna pick up some more moss tomorrow. So now I'm gonna help Aaron out a little bit. I'm going to grab our blower right here and I'm gonna blow some of the leaves from in the flower beds and from the edges of the grass into the grass. So hopefully he can pick a bunch of it up. Once we got into the project, we decided not to clean up the leaves super well because there's still so many that need to fall. Like you can see all the leaves on those trees and then in the birch trees up here, the locust trees there, and the great big mulberry. <laughs> so we clean them up pretty well, um, using the blower mostly and the rake a little bit, but it does look a lot cleaner. And there's Aaron, he's dragging the bags. <laughs> They're heavy. Yeah, everything is super wet from yesterday. It's probably not the wisest decision to be out here doing this today, but 
it does look a lot better and I feel like with the weather coming it's best to stay up on like stay on top of this type of project that way we don't have an enormous job in the end I think we'll thank, or thank ourselves later so we just have a couple more areas we're gonna clean up for leaves and then we're gonna haul some wood up to the house It is starting to sprinkle. I didn't think it was supposed to rain out here today, but I have these last two piles all raked up. And it sounds like Aaron, I think he's already started hauling wood without me. Let me go up there and check it out. Oh, and on the way, I did decide not to clean the leaves out of the rose garden because there are so many more that need to fall. And cleaning up around rose bushes is not the most fun chore so i just cleaned off the sidewalks and it can just look nice and fallish for now did you start hauling wood without me good start do you want to look for a piece of cardboard we can put against the wall sure i think i've got one that will fit so we just stopped to have a little bit of lunch and take a break before we continued hauling wood so now i'm going to go grab a piece of cardboard um, that way, just in case some of the wood falls off the stack and up against the house, it kind of protects the paint a little bit. It looks awesome. Let me tell you, there's got to be some kind of rack we can build or buy to put up against the house. I'm sure there is. I've seen them. We just haven't made it that far. There. That should do it. Hey, buddy. Oh, your, is your tire flat? Oh, yeah, it is. I didn't notice that. Bummer. While Aaron fixed the tire, I came and cleaned up the last two piles of leaves. So the pile that was right there, and then this pile pretty well anyway. There are a few more leaves to fall yet, and a whole bunch more in that tree. So I'm not gonna spend a bunch of time cleaning out the asparagus. In fact, it's kind of good mulch. So we'll see if I make it to cleaning that out or not. So now I'm gonna go put my tools away and go help Aaron with the rest of the wood hauling. Hey, Russell Kitty, what are you doing? What are you doing, cuteness? All right, so we've got our little stack of wood here. This is our outdoor fireplace. We have some people coming over tomorrow night, so we wanted to be prepared to start a fire out here if it's nice. We've got a couple things left to do before we're actually going out to my parents' house tonight. My family's getting together for dinner. So we are going to be cleaning out a couple of containers like this number right here. Doesn't that look beautiful? So we're going to take this and get rid of it and Beautimous. then, huh? <laughs> you like my choice of Cracks vocabulary. <laughs> so yep, yeah, that one's going. There is a hanging basket inside that little mini pergola right there that we need to toss. And then probably all the garbage is in the, the barn. Oh, there's a nice, oh, there's a nice ivy in there. I kind of want to save. Yeah. Yeah, that's a nice ivy. I'm going to save that. All right, it can hold over in that container <laughs> for a little while anyway until I have a chance to repot it. Thankfully, I had a pot of soil sitting here. That it's not usual. And by the way, you guys, this John Deere little lawn tractor was a new purchase this year. And this trailer has been so nice to have. Like that was worth all of the, of what it cost put together, just that trailer. <laughs> Don't you think? <laughs> I think so. It's useful. It is but super no. useful. It has saved me a ton of lifting and hauling of stuff all over our property. Usually Aaron leaves it hooked up and then I can just roll it around wherever I need to use it. So now my last thing to do today is to water in here. I don't think I'm gonna have to water very much, but like these gorgeous nine barks right here um, tend to dry out kind of quickly in, in the greenhouse. So I just haven't had a chance to get them in the ground. So I'm gonna water those, but everything else looks pretty nice. Let me update you quick on the fall crops I planted. Planted these in August and they are lo just looking so great right now. I thought I saw some. Yeah, look at this. There's a pea. That is exciting. I don't know if there's any more. There's got to be more. Nice. I'm going to eat this one. There's another one. Oh, they're so good. They actually taste like spring to me. Mm-hmm. Anyway, you can see that the peas are just doing excellent. We moved them in here because we were getting 26 and 27 degree nights. And I thought that they might do better in here. There are the carrots right here. They're looking really good. I'm not sure how big the actual carrots are. Not super big yet. But they're working on it. 
Same goes for the beets. The beets are looking really nice. Can you see that? Yeah, they're looking really great. A little bit longer in the soil. And then the cilantro is coming along. And you might remember I did have to reseed the cilantro because my first crop did not come up very well. Oh, look at the beautiful fall color. This is an Arctic fire dogwood, you guys. And the branches are beautiful bright red in the winter time, but the fall color, oh my word, it's so stunning. Got these arborvitus sitting back here that I haven't had a chance to put in the ground yet. You might remember we planted these other five last, I think, November. So we've been waiting to get these ones in the ground so we could kind of finish this hedge back here. I think it'll look really pretty. So I decided to repot this ivy real quick. I found this really neat aged terracotta pot. This is how I love them to look. I like them to look like they've been in the garden for a long time. And then I had this topiary form, which I've had for a couple of years. I don't think I even used it outside or inside for that matter last year. It's just been hanging out out here. So it's kind of the perfect opportunity. So I groomed up the ivy, probably used a little bit more grooming. I didn't spend much time on it. And then I sprayed some shine on its leaves just to kind of perk it up a little bit, kind of knock some of the dust off. And I think it looks really cute in here, especially after it starts growing a little bit, filling that topiary form. So now I just need to go find a saucer for it and then I can bring it inside. So that's pretty much it for today, you guys. I hope this wasn't too boring of a vlog. It was kind of just like, this is what we're doing on a Sunday, hauling wood, picking up leaves, taking care of stuff, getting things watered. Um, but mainly, I really just wanted you to meet our new kitty, Russell, um, because you will see him show up in videos because he loves to be around us, just like Dexter. Um, so anyway, I hope you guys are all having a great start to your week, and we will see you in the next video. Bye.